and it spider webs so fast the more people you talk to it's like you're not talking to one person realize this guys when you talk to one seller one property owner you're really talking to a future like 30 or 40 prospects through that person repeats referrals and referrals of referrals if you take the next couple months and do exactly what i'm telling you to do write your letters make your calls and talk to as many property owners as possible your business is going to explode now how many people are doing the weekly email now if you don't have something in place like that what's the point of getting leads to close deals today that's fine but then they're going to forget about you in two years and use another agent like let's just take red x out of it you can do for sale bounders for free, door knocking for I free, do. meeting people in public for free, DMing people I on do. Instagram for free, making videos for free, doing emails for free. Free, 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 free. Because if 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 you if you don't have consistency in your marketing, your clients view you as inconsistent. Hey guys, uh <clears throat> I mean you're you're here for a reason, right? You you uh you you need that shot or you're you're looking for motivation. You're you you want to take your business to the next level. Um, I mean, why would you spend time on a Thursday afternoon to you know, sit on a Zoom call, right? Um, while we're letting them, waiting on people to come in, there's still a ton of people um, coming in. Uh, put your hand up on the Zoom if you just have just a big win through the 30 day, th 30 listing challenge that you want to share. I'd love to hear about some big wins you guys are seeing. I'm seeing a lot of posts in the Facebook group and, you know, people are messaging me left and right about listings they're getting. Go ahead, Marlo. So, Ricky, I'm a little nervous. I sent out 20 letters, got a call back um, to preview the home, and I just put, you know, the regular, would you, you know, consider selling your house? Mm -hmm. Got a call back, and I have an appointment to preview the home on next Monday. Okay. So I'm kind of nervous as to how that's going to go. Once I preview, like, how do I convert him over from, yeah. you know, me having a buyer to seller? Uh, do you have a buyer? I possibly do. Okay. Don't do the possibly thing. Write letters for buyers that you have, number one, right? Okay. That's what I said in the first, yes. the first video. I was like, have a buyer and write letters for the buyer. That way, when the seller calls, you have a buyer. Okay, number one. Number two, it doesn't matter if you have a buyer because if you have a buyer, you write a letter and then you know you look at the property and the seller says, hey, show it to the buyer. You're like, okay. You agree on the listing price and commission. You go to the buyer and the buyer says, you know what? We actually want this house over here. We want to make an offer. And now the buyer is gone from the house that you wrote the letter to. Happens all the time. Or maybe they change their mind or maybe they decide they don't want to do anything right now, whatever. Happens all the time. So even when you have a buyer, you don't really have a buyer because they could change their mind tomorrow. Okay. That's true. What you need to do is walk into the appointment and visualize that this is your parents. This is your mom. Okay. This is your mom. How would you treat your mom? See, I hear you say, I'm nervous because I don't know how to convert it into a listing from there. That's what you're saying, right? Right. What I want you to be thinking is not how to convert them, but how to help them. Okay. Okay. Mr. Seller, why are you selling this? Try to understand the motivation behind them wanting to sell and try to help them through that. That's your job, Marlo. Not okay. to list the property necessarily. Somebody says gotcha. they can't. Somebody says they can't hear me, but I imagine everybody on the call can hear me except for the one person I would imagine. Marlo, listen to me. It's not about being nervous that you that you may or may not convert. It's being about nervous whether you may or may not be able to help this person. Gotcha. Okay. So walk into the listing appointment and treat them like family. Think about what would I ask my mother or father if they were this person? How would I treat them? What would I say to them? You know, how would I handle the situation if it were my father? Right? Okay. That's how you need to walk into a thing. And when you when you leave, it's not about um it's not about did I get the listing? I don't care about the listing. Okay? If it's all around this one listing, our business is dead. 
right? And unless you have a bunch of listings happening, you don't have a career. Your your business does not hinge on one deal. Right. It hinges on you learning from this experience, whether you get the listing or not, and treating these people like they're your family, right? Okay. Does that make sense? It does. Thank you. Does that help? Yes, it does. You have nothing to be nervous about. If you I get the listing, that. great. Thank if you. you don't get the listing, great. It doesn't matter. What matters is, did we go okay. in there and try to help them? If helping them computes to getting a listing, awesome. If it doesn't, awesome. Okay. Got it? Thank you. You're welcome. Brian, let's hear your big win. Hey, how's it going, Ricky? Good. So, um, yeah, my win... Uh, had a have a buyer who literally was targeting this certain area. So I sent out about, I think, 95 letters to all those houses. Mm. Um, and I put it in the, the Facebook group. Um, the guy texted me and it wasn't obviously a number I had in my phone yet. And I almost deleted it. So, you know, I did a, a note in the Facebook group. So just everybody be aware. If you see something come across that doesn't look right, investigate it a little bit before you delete it for spam. Um, that makes sense. Mm. The owner, the owner emailed you from the letter. Yeah. He's saying, Hey, oh, bro, yeah. didn't even reference the letter. I'm interested. Yeah. Let's talk. So-and-so. And that's it. Happens all the time. Yeah. Well, it's the first time for me. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I went in, have a buyer for the area. Um, coincidentally put the buyer into contract literally three days before my, my visit with this homeowner. Um, hit it off with him, spent an hour with him, literally talked about the house for 10, 15 minutes, talked about what his next steps were for 30, 35 minutes. Mm -hmm. um, that was it. I mean, we we barely got into price range of what he thought is, you know, what I thought the house would go for, um, which was kind of in line with where he thought it might be anyway, which was, which was awesome. Yep. Um, so we're supposed to reconnect Monday and um, I'm thinking that'll be, you know, give me this stuff I got to sign and let's, uh, let's get going. Never think know. It, obviously it's, so it's not a complete win yet, but it's, uh, you know, and I, it is a win. Verse, you create a relationship. They know how 100%. you operate. Like I they was know just how saying, you go back and forth. They know how you communicate there. You made it this far. So obviously they like you, whether they do a deal or not, guess what? They're going to do a deal with you later. Refer all their friends to you. 100%. This is, this is, uh, this is snowball territory, guys. This thing just explodes, yep. right? It, it's seeds. You're planting seeds. Yeah. You to, know, I was to, to Marlo's point, you're just building relationships. Like this guy's been in the house 50 years. He's the mayor of the block. So even if I don't, you know, if he doesn't use me because he's got a friend who wants to buy the house, it's just building the relationship. I was telling a brokerage today that I was talking to that we're building our careers here. Yes, I want you to crush this year, 2024, but the money you make in 2023 and four are kind of a byproduct of the seeds you're planting to really crush 2026 and seven. Um, like, and it spider webs so fast. The more people you talk to, it's like you're not talking to one person. Realize this, guys. When you talk to one seller, one property owner, you're really talking to a future like 30 or 40 prospects through that person, repeats, referrals, and referrals of referrals. Think about that for a second. Every prospect that you create a relationship with is worth 10 to 20 deals to you over the life of your career. Um, it's you're it's not a singular, it's not just we're we're not this this isn't this isn't one dimensional. This is Matt, you don't guys don't realize the the you know the way that this thing plays out. That's why I'm just trying so hard to get you guys just to connect with people. And I realize like people don't want to make calls. So I'm like, well, let me have them write letters. And guess what? In the Facebook group, nothing but letter post. I don't see very many phone call posts, right? And that's fine. I like that. We took a second to take a step back. Okay, let's throw a bunch of letters out there in the world. Guess what? People are getting listings left and right off this thing. It's awesome. What I want to see, though, is you call the people you wrote the letters to that didn't that didn't call you. Um, you know, call the expireds and find 20 people that might consider to relist. Like, let's do that work too. Okay, this is kind of a <laughs> this kind of get you into into that kind of thing. So let's do the three here. Let's go kind of fast. The big wins. Mark, go. Hey, Ricky. Thanks for being here for us today. 
Um, I just want to share my big win. Uh, my wife, Jess, and I, we <clears throat> sent out, or I sent out 190 letters. Um, and then on Tuesday, we got a call from one of the letters. Um, it just so happened that the individuals were coming back from their lake home and they got their mail and they opened the mail. They were thinking about selling their home. And truthfully, <clears throat> they called, uh, called the number on the bottom and my wife uh, set up the appointment the same day. We went to see them, um, and the the wife um, specifically said to us, the only reason she called or her husband called was because the letter was handwritten. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really key to everyone. Yeah. Um, but it's the only uh, reason not... they opened it. It's the only reason yes. they opened it. It's the only reason they called you. That's why I'm telling you yeah. guys, handwrite envelope. Hand right because the little extra time it takes rather than just throw a stamp of your return address on there means everything. And it's the difference of them opening it or thinking it's spam. Um, so, yeah, we met with them. And uh, like like you just said, um, we treated them like family. They got a little work to do on their home. And um, so we're going to list their home after the Super Bowl. So freaking um, amazing, isn't it? Yeah, it, it really is. It, it's and for me, um, I don't want to say I'm new, but I'm uh, new ish in this. And this is the very first time that I've gotten anyone to call me back or answer a letter. So I'm kind of on cloud nine right now. Um, <clears throat> and then secondly, after these 190 letters went out, today was my very first day. I started calling them all today. So mm -hmm. I only made 10 calls, but it's more than uh, I made yesterday. So I'm Dude, super listen, excited. Everything happy. adds up. Every little bit adds up. I'm telling you, one person you talk to is really like 40 future prospects over the next decade that you're talking to. That's what you guys need to think about. Every prospect you're talking to, whether they buy or sell or not, is literally like 30. You're talking to like 30 people. They're going to do business with you in the future, right? That's what you need to be thinking about. Um, are you using Red X for that to make the calls? Yes, we are. I'm going to put a free trial for Red X. If you guys don't have it yet, right there in the chat, free 14 day trial. Um, you have to have it. I don't know what else to say. It's a couple hundred bucks. You get all the property owners' names and emails and phone numbers and stuff in your market, whoever you want. It's wild. Uh, if you're not doing it, what else are we doing? What are we doing here? The name of the game is talk to property owners. Here's a way to do it for literally nothing. Um, is it Chantel? Hi, Ricky. Hello, hey. everyone. Uh, hey. I'm from Montreal, Quebec, so it's a little different here. I think uh, when you talk about the uh, talking about the the commission, when you meet them, uh, it's a little different because we have contract for for buyers and we have contract for sellers, and we cannot have two contracts, so it's a little yep. different. However, I sent about uh, 160 letters. Mm -hmm. I got two calls. I'm meeting them both tomorrow. It's, mm -hmm. It just happened like that. Um, the first one was like kind of threw me off because I was not expecting that. Uh, and uh, he bought the house. They bought the house about three years ago. So I think with the interest rate, I'm looking, this house was for sale many times and finally it sold, but I sent them anyway. And they call me your, back. Your mic is kind of messing up. We can barely oh. hear you. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me check if I, is it okay? Can you, if I, I can't hear you at all. Oh, so sorry. Hang on. Let me check. I'll be, no. I'll be back. No, Ricky, that might be I'm you. I'm hearing her on my end. Oh, yeah, you can hear her. Yeah. It's you, Ricky. We can hear her. Okay, well. guys. Yeah, Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I don't know what happened there. I guess I can't hear for some reason. You guys can hear me though, right? Thumbs up. All right, cool. Sorry about that, Chantel. I don't know what happened there. Whatever. We get it though. You had a big win. We're proud of you. Joseph, go. What's up, man, Ricky? I appreciate you saving my career in 2020, bro. Um, been cold calling ever since. And I recently broke through a, a limiting belief I had with, with my coach. So we were doing four sell by owners and expireds and circle prospecting. And I was preferring circle prospecting, just, you know, kick my feet up, have a glass of wine, knock them out. And we noticed that my average price point wasn't any higher, even when I got to pick my neighborhood. So we kind of worked through like why that was. And I had, you know, some limiting beliefs about not being able to help people who were doing better than me financially. Oh, and that's I been see. amazing. And so um, right after that, I had my assistant only put things in the dialer that were double the average price point. And I called through all those and I still had like 20 minutes left in my dial session. So I was measuring mm -hmm. the time like you always talk about. And I, so I had to do a low price neighborhood right after that. And then they were all the rude people. And it's like the opposite of what I thought was going to happen, happen, man. And it's exactly yeah. what I. It's cool to have little breakthrough moments like that, isn't it? 
Absolutely, bro. I appreciate you. That's good stuff. Glenn, go real quickly. Hey, how's it going? Um, so just a big win. I moved into commercial space because I helped an attorney with a $5,000 rental and treated it like I did in some of my $2 million listings. And yep. now we are under due diligence for a $70 million commercial property. It's always nice. Because he liked how it worked. He wanted me to help his clients out. And supposedly there's more out there for that. That's so. beautiful, man. That's beautiful, man. Good work. Lisa, what's your big win? Hey, hey, I did a for sale by owner the mm -hmm. week that you did the first uh, video yep. and um, got the husband to give me the appointment, uh, went, got the listing on a 765000 We have two cash offers on it. And she has a friend that's selling that was mm -hmm. interested in buying her house for like 800 something. Mm -hmm. This couple is really known in the entire area. Mm -hmm. And when I close the deal, yeah. they're going to tell everyone about me because they are they were born and raised and got married and live in the area. Her family owned like the, the gas company that supplies gas and to the whole area. So it was a win-win. And they even have a realtor in the family, but I called. So think about the ripple effect of talking to this person and how many that like that one person, how many prospects over the next 10 years do you think that turns into? Oh my, they live smack in the middle of the most expensive neighborhoods in that area. And that's one of the most up and coming area in the mm -hmm. Atlanta area. Yeah. So See, I'm going to be the premier agent, listing agent for that area. <laughs> so you think about you think about, you know, some people are like, oh, cold calls and all this stuff. It's like each person you talk to, you're literally talking to like 20, 30 people right now <laughs> over the next like five, 10 years. It's insane. It's insane. And you can literally talk to them for pennies at will. That's good stuff. That's good stuff. Michael, big win. Hey, Ricky, can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, big win that I had is I had a limiting belief that you couldn't get million dollar fizzbos. Mm -hmm. And I said, screw it. Let me call. I got mm -hmm. I made a call. I was up against tons of agents. I got the listing. It wasn't the price I wanted, but after a week, but after two weeks, we reduced the price and we're about to get an offer accepted because of it. So it, it was a pretty big win for me. That's wild, man. Nice work. Nice work. Bill Elliott, what's your big win? A uh, big win. I uh started making for sale by owner calls. I probably not as many as we want, but 10 calls in. I had two appointments. Mm. Yeah, one of them is the six hundred thousand dollar home, um, and I'm, I was the only agent that showed up there. And he's got my card in his wallet. And he's going to list in three weeks. Nice, bro. Nice. So I'm Love that. realizing the little effort that I put in. Yeah. Now results. Okay. Now what? Now what do we do? We understand that that little effort produced those huge results. Now what do we do? We Keep maximize going. the. We maximize the effort that we put doing the same thing. Yeah. Don't stop. I'm do this deal. Now I'm going to work on this deal and I'm not going to try to get any more deals anymore. That's the, that's the big red flag of a losing agent. Absolutely. It's not going to make it in the business where they do one deal at a time. You got to yeah. be able to juggle. Yeah. Do more of that. Get more of those going. Absolutely. Nice. Diana. Yes, Ricky. Hello. Um, I was I, I had I, I was a home builder for a our foundation um, association. Hold on one contest. sec. Hold on one sec. I'm gonna mute everybody, and then you can unmute. Okay. Um, I recently just won a huge Halloween contest test with our local association by being a home builder, and I needed a playhouse to be a part of my costume and I reached out to somebody who had a cheap playhouse on Facebook marketplace went to go snag it come to find out that they are looking to sell their home and I told them that I'm a local realtor gave them my business card and lo and behold they didn't like the original realtor they were thinking about using and they hired me within a day of chit-chatting with them and I won our contest that's awesome nice work Terry, big win. All you got to do is unmute. Okay. So the house in Tulsa, 
that I took off the market, got new pictures on and home mm -hmm. staging. I've been getting continual showings. I've had eight showings and I've got two second showings and already an offers coming in today. And it looks like I'm going to have a multiple offer situation going mm -hmm. on. Mm -hmm. Isn't that beautiful? Isn't that beautiful? It is. I, um, I, uh, we, we put one on the market today or yesterday. We had seven showings on it. It was, uh, 390 or so old house, like a 1970s house or something. I was so surprised. We had like seven showings today, first day and, um, supposed to be getting multiple offers nuts. I'm like, you guys know rates are 8%. <laughs> you guys know rates are up there. Um, kind of insane. All right. I just want to kind of get into maybe just like touch on the market for a sec, kind of just a little update and like the things I'm seeing also just, just kind of give you guys that little push. Um, how many of you just put in the chat, if you're having trouble, like with your phone calls, like you just don't want to make them, you're like, Oh, this letter thing's cool. I'm going to do the letters and now I don't have to do the calls or whatever. If that's you, you know, let me know in the chat. Um, because that now that's where we need to kind of bridge the gap. Okay. Um, the letters are cool. The letters get calls coming in, but that's only kind of a little piece of the, the puzzle when it comes to this entire thing. Okay. And I see everybody saying me, that's why I wanted to bring this part up. And it's awesome because what I've done is I've shown you, I've shown you that, uh, like you, I can, I can help you draw some interest from uh, a, a potential seller who may be interested in selling without cold calling. Okay. So I bridged that gap for you. Okay. But I don't want you to replace that with everything because you're not going to build your entire career on letters. You you can get some stuff and it's going to happen. And you know, leads are going to come in and it's going to be awesome and all that, but you're not going to get enough. I mean, you'd have to do, I mean, you couldn't write enough letters to get enough leads coming in where it makes sense where like, that's your entire like lead gen system. Okay. So let me just say this. Okay. Cold calling is one thing, you know, getting a buyer lead coming in. That's a warm lead quote unquote is one thing now I want to bridge the gap between in the middle of a cold lead and a buyer that's a warm lead. Okay. And what is that? Somebody you sent a letter to. Now you're calling to see if they got the letter. Is that, is that just a little more than a cold lead? Is that just a little more than a cold call? Does it help you maybe bridge the gap just a little bit, just a little bit enough to actually make the call. And this is what I used to do because I had call reluctance as well. And I, you know what I did? I sent letters or postcards and then I called behind that. And it gave me the confidence to make the calls. After I did that for a while, I realized, you know what? I don't need the, I don't need the letters. I could just call people. Okay. But I used this to help myself bridge that gap between the cold call and making calls at all. So please don't throw this opportunity away where you could have made the call and felt good about it. Don't throw this away and wait too long. And now the letters, it was six months ago and you still haven't made the call. Now you threw away that opportunity to call and say, Hey, I sent you that letter. Don't throw that opportunity away. That's a massive opportunity for you. Not only for, you know, the fact that, you know, we're at this point in the year, but also for your confidence to start making the calls. Cause what this is, is this is, this is kind of like, um, you know, you got first grade, second grade, third grade, fourth grade, you know, and you build up. It's the same thing. This is kind of like, we're going through, you know, you know, kindergarten right now in terms of making cold calls. I'm trying to get you guys to first grade and the second grade and third grade, right? That's what this is. If I can get, if I can get that, because if you can do this and you make enough of these calls of people you sent the letter to, you will develop the confidence that you can call anybody without a reason. Hey, I can, you know, like I can just call people and see how they're doing. Tell them who I am and what I do and see if there's anything I could do to help them. You'll get into that mindset where like now you're unstoppable. Right? 
Okay. Um, maybe someone who has call reluctance, I want to speak to one of you. Just unmute if you have call reluctance and let's let's talk about it for just a second. And then we're going to move on to market stuff. And at the end, I want to do like I normally do, just Q&A until nobody has any questions. So if you have those kind of questions, write them down, hang on to them. Call reluctance person, unmute, go. Hey, Ricky. Hey. Um, so we, I, we've been doing cold calls for about two months, two to three months. And um, at first, we actually got a listing from it that we're, we're getting ready to close. But okay. lately, it seems that um, we'll, you know, we'll call and no one's answering. So I don't okay. know if it's because of the market. I and it are, just you, kind are you of calling like directly from your cell phone using a dialer? How are you calling them? A dialer. OK, triple single, a single dialer. OK. If it was triple, there could be a chance that maybe your phone number is popping up as spam. Are you using the smart number from uh, Red X to make sure your number doesn't pop up as spam? So I have both Red X and Vulcan, and okay. this is happening through Vulcan. Okay. Well, whatever the case may be, it could be your number popping up as spam. People just aren't answering. That's one scenario. That's why I like Red X. They have the verified smart number, and it prevents that. Number two, okay, it's not zero. Okay. There's a number of people who are picking up. That's what number I want from you right now. If you call a hundred people, how many people are you talking to? I would say about what, four, 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 four. That's pretty low. So the average is normally 10%. Mm -hmm. I would think that your numbers marked as spam or something to that nature. Um, that's kind of preventing people from picking up. That could be something going on, but you know, I deal with agents that make calls all day, every day, still um, calls for years. The number has always been 10%. You call a hundred people, you talk to 10, maybe one day you talk to 16, the next day you talk to eight, the next day you talk to 10. It averaged out to be 10% over hundreds of calls and thousands of calls. So if it's below that 10%, there's something going on. Okay. okay. I don't know what it is, but something's there. Okay, is there is there a call reluctance happening or you just have a question about that? Well, so the fact that I guess it's just me getting in my head that using excuses as why people are not calling. So I'm being reluctant on it. You like, know, because so because people like, aren't oh, answering, you're like, why should I yeah. make the calls? Yeah. Yeah. I get that. I think you should look into what's going on you know, like on the back end, um, if your number's popping up as spam or something. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Cool. All right. Let's see. All right. Before I get into the market stuff, last, last call, last training session, I asked you guys, um, if I did like a one-on-one -on -one with you guys, like audit your entire business, find the inefficiencies, map out your day, like do a complete one-on-one -on -one with you, just a one-time deal, which I think that's kind of what's in my mind. I mean, I did coaching. I had a thousand dollar a month, once a week call coach for like four months, one time. And you know what? I got everything I needed out of like the first call or two. I think this could be really beneficial, but a lot of you are like, yeah, I'll do it. So what I did um, is I put this together for you guys. Anybody that wants to do like a one-on-one -on -one business audit, you can do a one or two hour session right there. And I don't know, like, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to shut it down after the zoom. I'm not like blasting this. This is only for people on the zoom. And I'm going to shut it down at the end of the zoom because I don't want to fill up my calendar, you know, whatever. Um, and so, so many people, so, so many of you guys have been wanting this one-on-one -on -one, sit down, audit my business, dissect my entire situation, help me understand where I'm being inefficient, how to really map out what I'm doing for mega growth and all that stuff. Um, and so obviously I can't do that for free, but um, I can do it. Looks like you froze, Ricky. Am I back? Yeah, Ricky, we're not hearing you. I'm not okay. anyway. Am I back? You are. Where'd you lose me? You know, uh, that's the beginning. <laughs> right about when you were explaining about reviewing your, their business. Yeah, I was just saying like so many people want that. And so I can't do that for free, but I can do that. So there's a link there. If you guys want to do that, I'm happy to completely restructure your business for you. 
Um, it's not free, but I do plenty of stuff for free. And if the free is great, I'll answer every question until there's no no questions, etc. But if you want that, there it is. Uh, the market. All right. So we just heard from a couple people who's talking about multiple offers and stuff. So we're still seeing that. You guys are also seeing um, some listings stay on the market, right? Yeah. Um, so there's listings moving really quickly. There's listings that are kind of hanging out. There's more listings that are sitting right now in general. Yeah, probably so. And that's pretty um, common for this time of year too, right? Uh, like, uh, let's see. For example, let's see. Let's see. Active listings, right? Uh, let's see. That's new listings, active listings here. All right. Look at what we see normally, right? It's normally rising. And at this point in the year here, it's normally kind of starting to come down. It's actually still hanging in there with active listings. Now, this number right here, I'm fixing to show you. This is what I'm surprised about. See how this is spiking right now? And you see how the, the last two years, it kind of comes up this time of year, but not like this year. This is the new listing medium price per square foot. Price per square foot, asking price, new listing price. Isn't that interesting? Look at that. That's insane. If you go to media new listing price, you see the same thing. Look at that. New listing price shot up. Now you see it shoots up every year, but not like this year. That's different. It's very different. Um, let's cover some of this other data. Home sold. We're right on track as the, uh, the same shape of the, the curve uh, as every year. Um, lower than lower, of course, but same ebbs and flows throughout the seasons. New listings were almost caught up to last year, which, okay, of course, is extremely low. Nowhere near pre-pandemic. We got about half, less than half the listings we really need on the market. Prices, we're still well above last year. We're actually curving up a little bit right here. I'm really interested to see what this uh, new listing price per square foot and this new listing medium price, how these are shooting up. Of course, it's, it's angling down right here, but I'm real interested to see what that looks like over the next, you know, 60, 90 days. Um, are we going to see, you know, is that going to, is that going to result over the next 60, 90 days and increase in sales prices? I find that very interesting and I want to follow that. Let's see what else we got here. Months of supply about where we were last year. All this is lining up right where we were last year. Um, Goldman Sachs just came out with all their, you know, future forecast. Okay. And what they see, higher home prices next year, which it was only like 2% higher, higher mortgage rates, which they're expecting them to stay at 8% throughout like to Q4 next year. They're expecting them just to kind of come down into this, you know, a, a closer around like seven and a quarter by the end of the year next year. So they think interest mortgage rates are going to stay high throughout 2024. But they're, but because of that, Okay, because of no inventory, higher home prices, but the lowest number of existing home sales since the early 90s, they're looking at 3.8 million existing home sales. Um, what I find really interesting right now is new home sales. You know, new home sales are up 22%. You know, new home sales, like the average rate on new home sales are like six and a half percent because they're buying down the rate. Um and and those those sales are up like twenty two percent year over year. Um, I find that very interesting because at a six and a half rate, I think that's the sweet spot, honestly, where we're going to see this real surge. When are we going to get there? Who knows? Who knows? Um, but I just find that stat really interesting. Um, uh, again, no one on earth. I had Logan on from Housing Wire. Yesterday, I'll post that interview tomorrow, probably. Um, no one on earth can tell us how we're going to get to higher inventory, right? We're so far away from like a job, uh, a job loss recession. That's not even in like the cards right now as far as the job market. Um, 
yourself, right? All, all everything. The, the deficiencies are, are down as low as they were in the seventies. Um, you got forty five percent of homes owned free and clear. Most of the homes that have mortgages are less than six percent. A lot of them are three and four. These the, the most people have a mortgage. Their payment is so cheap, ridiculously cheap, right? Um, yeah, the 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 median and average mortgage payment right now, if you bought a house today, is three thousand dollars. But you know, thirty three percent of people are paying cash. You know, another thirty percent. Here here's a stat for you: thirty percent of homes are cash. Another thirty three percent are new homes buying at six and a half percent rates. Think about that for a second. You've only really got 30, you've only really got a third um, of the, I cannot mute this Michelle person. You've only really got a third of sales right now who are, who are buying on a mortgage at these higher rates. Think about that for a second. Um, not everybody's buying at these higher rates. You got cash, you got new construction, and then even the people that are buying, you know, on a conventional loan, they're getting the sellers to buy down the rates and stuff like that. Stuff is happening. So it's all very interesting there. Now for you guys, we're we're getting into the middle of Q4 right this second. I'm, I'm going to stress, I'm going to just stress this to the moon. Right now, that we're at the down point of the 10 year housing cycle, the down point of the yearly housing cycle. It's a double whammy right this second. This is the moment. This is, this is the moment to, to really explode your business, stack listings, build your database, plant those seeds. Um, your business from this point moving into next year is going to explode. Even if 8% rates stay there really long time in 2024, it does not matter. It doesn't matter if they go up to 11% or come down to 6%. It doesn't matter. If you take the next couple of months and do exactly what I'm telling you to do, write your letters, make your calls, and talk to as many property owners as possible, your business is going to explode. Now, how many people are doing the weekly email? Is anyone not doing the weekly email? Put that in the chat if you're not doing the weekly email. Because here's the thing. Your database, let's say your database is 500 people, all right? Uh, your database is 500 people. And let's think about this for a second. The different ways to, uh, to, to remarket to your database. Because this is the key, guys. You don't make a million dollars a year off of the cold leads or the people you meet for the first time in the year you make a million bucks. You make a million bucks from an accumulation and compounding relationships over the over the people that you planted seeds with five years ago, four years ago, three years ago, two years ago, last year. And then it all comes into a snowball type form. And now you've got the people you meet for the first time this year, as well as all the people you met over the last five years that all come together and help you make a million bucks. That's how you make a million bucks. And if you don't have a system in place where people you met five years ago, don't for, forget who you are or don't remember who you are then you're not going to have that compounding effect to get to the million bucks. So let's think about it. The different ways you can remarket to your database. All right. You've got email. You put it in the chat. You've got email, text messaging, phone call, uh, direct mail, social media. Uh, what other ways do you have that you can, that you can uh, email, text, call, direct mail, social media, Door knock. You're going to door knock your clients, your your database. You can go around and find their houses and door knock them. Uh, let's see. Pop buys, messenger, video. Okay. How? But how are you going to get the video in front of your database where all of your database see that consistently? Right. That's the problem. All right. So let's think about it. Okay. Let's let's run through them because it looks like you guys are coming up with the same stuff I I came up with. All right. Okay, cool. Newsletter, events, whatever. Okay. Direct mail. All right. Whatever system you have to, to market to your database has to be simple and scalable. Okay. Direct mail. What if you had 100,000 people in your database? 10,000 people, even 5,000. Direct mail is too expensive. Okay. Can you call 5,000 people and check on them on a consistent basis where they never forget who you are? Nope. Um, social media. Can you upload your database to social media 
and put make sure every single person in your database sees your content every time you post a video? Nope. 5% of the people that follow you will see your content. That's it. So that's out. Should you do social media? Should you do all direct mail and all that? Yes. But I'm saying this can't be your, your foundation of remarketing to your database. It's not, it's not scalable because you're, you're, it, I've proven my point that those aren't, those aren't in. Text messaging. Now, text messaging has legs. It could be a way. And there, and I, th I think there's pro there's there's platforms that allow you to to bulk text from your cell phone number. I think uh, I haven't played around with them at all, but most of them it's not your number. It's a five digit number, or maybe it's a different phone number altogether. Um, text messaging to me is still like kind of that intimate place where it's mostly friends and family. Yes, you get a few like marketing text messages and stuff. I use it in my business, but it's not like the foundation of the remarketing. Um, what are some others? And then you got email. An email, I know 90% of the people in my database are going to see that email in their inbox every week. And it takes me 15 to 20 minutes. And it doesn't matter if there's 500 or 50,000, it still only takes me 15 to 20 minutes. Bingo. Now I can scale. Now I can make sure no one ever forgets who I am. I can be in front of the most people organically with minimal effort. That's it. That needs to be your foundation, guys. Your entire foundation of remarketing your database needs to be the weekly email. It shows people how consistent, dependable, hardworking, professional you are. When they see it every, every week, they're like, oh, man, look how dependable they are. Look how consistent they are. Look how knowledgeable they are. I can tell that they wrote it because they uh, they gave me their opinions on what's happening in the market. It's not a it's not a generic. It's not information I don't want to know. It's local information. It's restaurants. It's listings. It's market data. Local market data. Things happening in the local market, and they're telling me what they think about it. This is my agent. It does all the heavy lifting for you. Now, if you don't have something in place like that, what's the point of getting leads to close deals today? That's fine, but then they're going to forget about you in two years and use another agent. And you're not able to compound your business into a million bucks. And you're there anyway, doing the effort. So I'm just stressing this because for those of you who aren't doing it, I want you to understand how important it is. And for those of you who are doing it, who might be thinking, you know, it's kind of working. No, it's really working. You just haven't seen it yet because it takes time to mature. It takes time for this stuff to happen. Things don't happen overnight. But you give me another path to compounding relationships that's better than a weekly email. And I'll start preaching about that. All right. If you've never seen the email and stuff, whatnot, I'll send you this. Let me put this in the chat. This, this. I'll put this in the chat and then I'll screen share. All right. Th this is every email that I've done for the last year. You can see exactly what I've done. Let's say, bam. All right. This is what I just put in the chat. Let me see. Let me see. Let me mute. Guys, bam. Look, here's a video. I go through the entire thing. I, I, I screen share and build the email and everything for you right there. Down here, you can see every email I did for the last year, 52 of them right here. Click on any of them. Bam, there it is. I write these myself every Wednesday. This is how you win, not automated. Writing them. Right here, you can click to get my four-week custom template. There's a link at the top for it. If you, if you have trouble coming up with content, use the four-week template. Week one is stats of the month. Week two, restaurant. Week three, deal of the month. Week four, news of the month. I've got the template, each week template, just plug and play. The market stats, the restaurant, et cetera. Easy. But you got to give, you got to spend a little time to give your opinions. Yeah, I went to this restaurant. Uh, my family went there. We had the whatever. It was amazing. 
Um, you know, ask for Bobby, tell him I sent you and reply back for a chance to win a $50 gift card. Boom. Engagement. Okay. Cool. All right. We talked about the Red X free trial. We talked about the weekly email. We touched on the market and how imperative it is for you to talk to as many property owners as you can but between now and the end of the year. Imperative. You should be going crazy every day. You should be going nuts in your mind. Like, got to get to another property owner. Got to talk to another property owner. That's how I used to be. That's how you have to be. You have to be crazy. You have to be a little crazy, guys. All right. Uh, we talked about me doing the consultation with you guys. Anybody that wants to do that. If you guys want to go in on a consultation or have a team or whatever, it doesn't matter to me. Let me see. I'm trying to think if there's anything else I want to cover before we get into Q&A. No, I think I'm good. Um, put your hand up on the Zoom if you want to get in on this Q&A. Danny, go for it. So, hey, Ricky. Oh, what's Danny? I think I got unmuted. But question is, I'm prospecting right now, and I'm I'm called expired much. So I'm calling like three-month-old expireds just to have better conversation with the um, fresh expireds, it was kind of like quick hang up rates. But I'm curious, I'm not really setting much appointments and I'm calling them um, five days a week for two hours. I just started like the past two weeks. So just curious, I know you say don't focus on the appointment when calling, but I'm trying to get in front of people and I'm getting in front of FISBOs, but I'm not getting in front of expireds. Uh -huh. um, and I'm listening and I'm hearing what they're saying. I'm not trying to close, but... I'm just why aren't you trying to close, Danny? Danny, why are you not trying to close? I'm trying to close, but like not when they're not motivated. Like if they're like, we had it on the market, it was, you know, a hundred thousand overpriced and they don't want to sell it at a realistic number. Um, and they don't have the high motivation that I'm not going to like push that. Why not? So I'm finding a lot of people. I just feel like if there's no reason, like no big motivation for them to move, then I don't know. It's kind of like, and they're not. Listen even to me, Danny, Danny. You, you've got to learn to read between the lines, though. A lot of times they don't know you. Don't assume that they're telling you exactly how, what's on their mind. They may have serious motivation. you got to learn to read between the lines sometimes on this. It's not always black and white. They may be telling you, oh, you know, 100,000 over. And, you know, we don't really want to, you know, move. You know, we, we would if we could, that kind of thing. But sometimes you're going to learn to develop this skill of feel. And you'll be able to feel. What's happening? And and the object is, Danny, to to put your name when you when you get that listing at a hundred thousand overpriced. Guess what you're doing? You're putting your name in a hat to possibly make a bunch of money and help someone sell a property. Okay, your uh, the object is to put your name in as many hats as possible because you don't know what hat the name is going to get pulled from. And if your net is not, if you don't have as as big of net as you can. Dude, things that I thought would sell in a day never sold. And things I thought would never sell sold in a day. Don't think you're the god of, of pricing, okay? You say it's 100000 overpriced, but the buyer who's actually buying it thinks that's a good deal. You don't know. Dude, things that I, things that I never thought would sell because it was overpriced literally sold in a week. And I'm like, oh, my God. Happened to me so many times. You got to get out of this. Oh, well, this, this one's going to sell or this one's not worth my time because it's overpriced. No, pursue it, bro. Pursue it. Because next thing you know, he's like, you know what? You know, we wanted 600. We know it's worth 500, but we'll list it for, you know, we're kind of a little more motivated than we were uh, you know, two days ago when we talked. We'll go for 550. You know, next thing you know, the market's up to 520 and we get an offer for 525. He's like, done. Happens all the time, all the time. Yeah, no, good, good point. I guess it's like they're like, well, I'm not going to sell if I can't get, you know, eight hundred thousand. They in say, in realistic they say it all the time, Danny. You know how many times Actually. I've heard that, and that same seller take uh, six seventy five, even lower. You know how many times I've heard not going to take a dollar less than nine hundred, and they they sell for let's see nine hundred. They sell for like you know seven fifty. You know how many times? Bro, they this is a game, man. This is a game that the sellers are playing. And they're always going to play it. You got to learn to play the game. 
No, it's like a buyer. I'm not going to pay any more than 600. The seller says, I'm not going down below any, any more than 700. And that's it. It's a done deal. We're not going to do the deal. And then like a week later, it's under contract and you got it for 650. They met in the middle. Happens all the time, bro. Everybody always squeezes more than they say. There's, there's times when people really stand firm, but, but those are rare occasions when somebody actually stands firm because when you put money in some, in front of somebody, they jump. When you show them a contract and they start calculating numbers that they're going to get on a certain closing date, it, the whole world changes for them. They all of a sudden become Mr. Negotiable. And you still set that realistic expectation at the appointment, kind of saying that this number could be high. Like if they're asking you, like, what do you no, think? I'll tell about them it is price? high. I'll tell them I don't think it's going to sell. Okay. Like, like I'm like, doesn't cost me a dollar. Let's throw it out there and see what happens. What, what, what harm does it do? You know, if you're not right, on the market, some people say like paying for like photography or putting in money for it. What? 300 hear... bucks, 300 yeah. bucks. True. Okay. Who cares about 300 bucks, dude? You have to invest in your business and you have to be willing to take risks, man. Yeah. I don't even, it's my team leader who pays, but I just, you know, I'm, I'm I was bought up in the industry kind of told like overpriced listings are not good, but I, then you, I totally then you take all the overpriced listings, you send them to me. I'll sell them and pay you a referral fee gladly. And I'll get all the future business from that seller. Yep. I'll represent them when they buy their next one. I'll represent all their friends and family. You want to throw it away over being overpriced? That's your decision, but I'm here for the relationship over the transaction. So if they want to go on the market overpriced, great. I'm here to help them do what they want to do. That's it. I don't care about the we deal. Get in our, it's like we get in our own way sometimes. Yeah. I don't You're care right. about the deal. I'm not here for the deal. Mm -hmm. I'm yep. here for I'm here for the I'm here for them. They want to they want to list it overpriced? Hell, let's go. I don't care about closing the deal. I care about serving them. Got it. Appreciate it. Daniel. Mr. Ricky, how are you, sir? How's it going? Good, bro. How you doing? Good. I went to your event last week. I live in Miami. I saw your event with my coworker. She's on the call too. Her name is Judy. Um, you were excellent, man. You did a, a very good job. And I'm really particular about events and talkers and trainings. And there's just so much. And the market is so saturated with it that it discourages me at times. But I thought that you were very realistic and you're not trying to sell anything. You're just trying to educate. And I thought that that was really good. Yeah. No, I appreciate um, so, that, man. Thanks for coming out. It means a whole lot. Absolutely, man. Um, I had, well, first of all, I want to talk to Daniel that just spoke with you because he resonated with me. I had a listing, Daniel, that I was after. I don't know. For me, Ricky, it's like I get motivated at times, right? There's times that I'm motivated. There's times that I'm not. There's times that I'm doing well. I chased this client for seven months just because I said, I looked at his listing, right? I sold a property for him like four years ago in the same building. He owned two units. When he had his unit, he had no intention of selling it. But I was like, man, I looked at the market and I said, I don't see another moment where he can get as much money as he can right now. So I told him, I said, listen, these are the comps in the building. I just want to show them to you. I didn't expect them to respond because you get ignored so much that you kind of get used to it. So I'm like, you know what? Maybe he'll communicate with me. And he did. And he's like, you know, I'll, I'll think about it, but I'm not ready yet. And every month I sent them like new sales or if they were actives or what it was. And then he started sending me things from Zillow that he would see. Mm -hmm. Go forward seven months later, he gives me the listing. And then he take, he gives it to me overpriced. I told him it's probably not going to sell at that price. He's like, well, I'm not going to take anything less than that. Yep. So that deters us, right? Because I don't want to give him false promises. That's okay. another thing. I think Daniel's probably asking you now. It's like if we tell them we're going to sell it for 1.9, but it's really going to sell for 1.7 and it doesn't, are we wasting our time lying to these people or pretending like this is going to happen? Why would you lie? Not? Why would you lie, my guy? It's not necessarily lying, Ricky, but like, for example, in Miami, the, we're, this is a very different market from any market in the United States. Okay. Miami. Everybody like says that about every market, bro. <laughs> Everybody says that about every market. So anyway, go ahead. So so in the condo market, there was a lot of different condos in that building. Um, yeah. Whatever. Long story short, we listed it at a certain price. He took it away from me 
Maybe three months later, he said that he had an issue with his attorney. He couldn't sell it. So now I had to wait another seven months to get it back. This yeah. was like a whole year ordeal. He okay. gives it back on the day that I tell him, hey, let's list it at 2.3, just for shits and giggles. Mm -hmm. and the highest sale in that building is 2.8, 2.08. Okay. So I'm like, man, I'm not going to sell this for 2.3. I just hope that that engages him to give it to me. Uh -huh. And then he calls me and says, okay, let's list it for 2.3. And I'm like, yep. oh, my God. I'm not going to sell this for 2.3. There's no Who way. Who cares? It Who actually, cares if you sell it? But he also gave me a bottom line, Ricky. He told me the, the lowest that I will take is 2.2. Awesome. And I have what, and I, 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 Hold on. I, Daniel, can I ask you something, though? I yes. see where you're going with the whole thing. What is the problem that you're running into with this? Because it sounds great from this. That, from well, I, that, that's just kind of towards Daniel's point. I wanted to kind of like piggyback on what he said. My thing now is, and I know you talk about getting listings and helping sellers, obviously. But let's back I, up though for one second. I don't want to leave that. I want to understand what is the problem with that? Or, or was, are you happy with the it? Problem, but I'm, I don't, and I think Daniel, what I just heard him speaking, because he sounded hesitant in his tone. I think it's a standard thing that happens to us agents where we don't want to over promise and under deliver, right? Because don't, if we tell you- Don't over promise and under deliver. Well, if you have an expectation of 2.3, I just had a listing. You're not going to have, do, do you know that you can take a listing at 2.3 and tell them that it's probably not going to sell? Do you know, do you understand that you can do that? And I absolutely did that. Okay. Oh. So then that, then there you go. You're setting the expectation that it's probably not going to sell. Let's just try it out and see. We'll do the best we can but do. He was, he also let it go a little bit lower and I, and I ended up having both sides of the deal, which I was very lucky. For how much? 2.2. Here you are now. I, who who knew that we we even got to the point where you close this? Here we are talking about the highest sell was two point zero eight. You know, two point three is was crazy number. You take this overpriced listing, and now you're telling us that you got on both sides of it for two point two, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. That was that was a very that moment. It proved to me that going after a client, as long as they give you a little bit of like something, you know what I mean, to 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 connect with. Um, it, he gave me that that drive to continue to be after him to get that that deal going. So yeah. obviously the problem is that we all get comfortable, right? You get a big deal, you get a big sale, or you sell a lot. I did very well last year with my company. I was number two. I was very grateful, very grateful. It came out of nowhere. I mean, obviously I plant the seeds, but you don't know what's going to come out of it. And this year obviously has been challenging. I haven't put in as much effort, and I'm not, I'm going to be 100% honest with myself because I am. You know, I just hired a virtual assistant. I know we discussed that at your event last week. They live in uh, in Venezuela. And I'm going to run ads in South America with EXP. Uh, I've been with EXP now for three months. Um, and so when I'm running the ads, I think my question to you is going to be this. They already have all these scripts, right? And ways to talk to people. And Orlando Montiel, which is a big motivator here in Miami, tells you this is what you have to say to these clients. And yep. I don't like to sound robotic. And I like to be realistic. So, so why? When, oh, so you have Philippines VAs reaching out to people. That's what you're saying. I have no. <laughs> my my virtual assistant is in Venezuela. That's where okay. she lives. I'm from there originally. Okay. She basically like we're running Facebook ads right now, right? Okay. Why invest in Miami? And with the Facebook ad, for example, today like seven people clicked on the link, right? Okay. And it sent the guide, and then the guide gives them information. So I guess my question to you would be when that client comes in, because obviously sometimes I get hesitant about speaking with these people that you don't know. How do you approach that situation and still feel comfortable without being, obviously you call them and you ask them questions, but let's say they ignore you. Okay. So a few parts to the question. If they ignore you, how often are you following up with them until you either give up or you just add them to a drip campaign and you're like, here you go. You know, I mean, twice, when you call twice at the most. Okay. Twice, twice at, the, at most. the most. Why am I going to waste another dial on somebody that's not going to answer when I could call somebody that might might answer? Yeah. Okay. Um. So, and then when I'm talking to them, mm -hmm. how, I don't know, because a lot of them are going to be resistant, right? Or, you, or they're why, not. Why do you assume that, bro? Like, there's a lot of assumptions <laughs> happening. I honestly, honestly, Ricky, I've done Red X before. I've done uh, a bunch of different programs, right? Probate leads, all that kind of thing. And sometimes you got, you're right. You have to call like 200 people for five or 10 to give you a chance. And then even out of the five of those 10, there's no guarantee that they're going to buy anything from you. And you just have to, yeah, you know, there is. 
Yes, there is. There, to an extent, I want to say yes. No, um, it's a hundred percent. It's one hundred percent. You're you're thinking short term. I'm thinking career. I'm thinking how can I build the biggest career in Miami history. You're thinking how can I make money this year. I'm thinking about the 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 long tail of the person I'm talking to over the next 10 years, what that looks like. Because that one person I'm talking to, if if three out of the five never talked to me again or do business, the two that I did talk to, I did 30 to 40 deals a piece through repeat referral and referral of referral over a 10-year period. That's 80 deals I did off of those calls. Might it happen this year? Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. But over the course of 10 years, I know for 100% it's going to happen. So I'm a little, I, I, I'm building a career here. I don't care about 2024. I got you. Okay. Okay. I think, I think maybe open yourself to, to more looking at the big picture of what you could yeah. really be and how big you could actually be. Um, if you thought a little more broader in terms of your career and the longevity Right. It sounds like you're just trying to do deals today, which is great. We want to do we want to do deals today. You got to do no, deals do. today. You're going to do deals today. That's awesome. You're already do. doing deals today. Now I that you're offers, but yes, you're doing deals today, right? So but, now, now that you got that, now that you have deals going on today, yes, you know, awesome. But how do we take it to the next level? I'm trying to take you to to the to the farthest realm, bro. Right. I'm trying to take you way further and stretch you more than you've ever been stretched. And I'm telling you, you act like talking to five people is a maybe, maybe not or a waste of time. When I'm telling you that that is what's going to get you to the to the farthest realm of the universe in your business. The only way you probably weren't here when I said this, the only way that someone gets to a million, 10 million in in commissions is a, a compounded uh, a relationship built business. The leads you talked to five years ago, four years ago, three years ago, two years ago, last year, all compounding into the year you make 10 million, not the cold leads that you, that you got on Facebook ads, the year you made 10 million. You're never going to make 10 million off of cold leads or people you never talked to that you talked to the, for the first time the year you make the 10 million. It's going to be a combination of those people and all the people you talked to over the last six years, right? Yeah. I'm trying to take you to 10 million. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Ricky. I appreciate it, man. Morgan. Hey, how's it going? Hey, bud. Hey, so um, I actually had a question in regards to call reluctancy. Um, I have about like like maybe at least 400 people in my database that I have like no idea how they got there. I don't even know what to say to them. I'm not sure if they're from FISBOs, expired or whatever. Yeah. Um, trying to figure it out. Do you um, do you uh, send them anything? Emails, text messages, direct mail, anything like that right now? So some of them I have their in emails, others I do not have their emails. So yes to no. And you don't know where they came from. Most likely, uh, Fizbo's and, and expires from years ago. But mm. some of them I have no idea. I just transferred my database. From my w phone. Wouldn't that be a? Isn't that isn't within that a great reason to call? Like just say, hey, how do I know you? Yes, you're in my database. I don't know how you got there. You know, I'm a real estate agent. Did I ever talk to you before? Maybe years ago or something? I just can't place you. Isn't that a great, that would be an incredible, it is an incredible conversation starter. Guys, a lot of the reasons to call are so right in front of your face. It's like, just be real with people. You know what I'm saying? Like, hey, you're in my database. I've been sending you emails. I see you've been opening them. I can't really place how we met. But I wanted to reach out and say hi, you know, and make a formal introduction so that maybe if there's some business down the road that we can do together, I'd love to help you. You know what I mean? Okay. And then lead into asking for the email or something or whatever I'm missing. Exactly. Do you have, do you, are you moving anywhere anytime soon? Do you have an agent that you normally work with? 
you know, I'd love to, you know, work with you when the day comes. Okay. If I stay in touch, you know, what's a good email, all the stuff that's in the scripts. All right. All right. Makes sense. Like you guys, you can call anybody and say anything, (laughs) you know, it's all about your personal, your personableness. You know, how comfortable do you make people feel? Um, how well are you at at just making friends of people? You know what I'm saying? So would you say there's a script to that or just authentically come up with one or something or no? Yeah, there's a script, but I mean, it's like, pretend like you're talking to your dad, your brother, your cousin, your best friend from high school. You had to pretend like it's a it, pretend like, like look on Facebook and find a find somebody from high school that you hadn't talked to since high school. How long ago has that been? About almost 20 years. There you go. There you go. I'm almost 30. So, so 20 years ago, you hadn't talked to him in 20 years. Pretend like it's that person. When you call these people, you know, Hey, you know, how's it been going? You know, talk to them like they're your family. You know what I'm saying? And then just listen, you know, I don't remember where I quite know you from, but you know, I, I have you here. I wanted to call and check on you. Just make sure you're doing all right. See if there's something I could do to help you. Sure. Thank you. The whole goal is to make sure they're getting the weekly email. Right. Well, number one goal, is there any kind of real estate deals that, that, that you can help them with? Okay. And, and make sure they're getting the weekly email and that you're here. If they ever decide to do something, have any questions, reach out. Then they'll start getting the weekly email, get to know you better through that. If they didn't know who you really were. And then boom, magic happens. Heard. Thank you. Good stuff, Good stuff, bro. Leah. Yes, sir. You look like a bookshelf today. <laughs> I'm not a bookshelf. <laughs> you look like one. I'm not a bookshelf. What can I do to help you? Um, I actually had not signed on to Red X um, yet, but I have been doing the letters. I've been doing them manually and sending them out. And, um, you know, touching my database and stuff and just looking for some responses. I, I have to be honest, you know, everyone is, is has when they were giving their, um, what was it, their wins or what have you. I'm very humble and I have, don't mention, you know, my wins per se, but I'm told by a lot of my <laughs> realtor friends that, um, I I don't recognize what a lot of my wins are because recently, and I'm gonna be honest with everybody on this call, I know it's like over 400, there's way too many of you for me to be, I'm embarrassed. My electricity got cut out because I'm spending so much money in marketing that I didn't you know, catch that. And it was devastating for me not to have, I was like, wait a minute, hold up, you know, I'm spending all of this money here trying to get these listings, trying to talk to people and spending all day long calling and being What, what were you spending I'm money like, on? It's it's not, huh? What were you spending money on? Yeah, that's what it is. Like I have like um, my mailings and listings to leads and, um, you know, you know, Google marketing and, yeah. um, you know, just- you, you know, you know, all the marketing in the world for a real estate agent. The, the entire objective of the marketing is just to get us into a conversation with the property owner, right? Mm-hmm. You know, on Red X, you, you literally get property owners for a penny and you just call them and have, a, have that conversation with them for like a penny. Let's work the numbers, okay? Let's say it costs you two cents to get a property owner, which is really like 1.5, okay? Mm-hmm. And then you've got a, a 10% pickup rate. So now we're at 20 cents per conversation. Let's say mm-hmm. one out of two conversations go great. Now we're at 40 cents per great conversation with a property owner, 40 cents. Let's say you suck at calls and it takes you five conversations to get have a good one. That's a dollar. If you suck, a dollar per great right. conversation with a property owner, a dollar, right? What right. do you need marketing for? The whole purpose of marketing is to try to have conversations with prospects. You get to pick the prospect. Right. And let's say you suck at calls. Let's say you suck. Yeah. Yeah. The price range, everything. Let's say you suck. It costs you still a dollar for a great conversation with somebody who gives you their information to stay in touch with forever to do business. Mm -hmm. Right. You don't have to, you don't, 
You can do your entire business without marketing. You can call for sale by owners for free. Like, let's just take Red X out of it. You can do for sale by owners for free, door knocking for I free, do. meeting people in public for free, DMing people I on do. Instagram for free, making videos for free, doing emails for free. Free, free, mm -hmm. free, 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 free. I do. Right? I do that and You too. can build I your entire too. business and make a million dollars a year off of free stuff because it all comes back to just conversations. And if you if you have a way that you can have conversations with people in your market and consumers for free, which we do in today's world, we've always had it, then, and you don't want to spend money on marketing, you don't have to. See, the problem is we feel like we got to spend the money on the marketing. We spend all the money in the marketing and then it still doesn't work. Well, you, you had all these free leads anyway, and you didn't make it work with those. What makes you think buying leads is going to magically turn this thing around for you? You can't run away from the fact that you have to talk to people and build relationships. You can't run away from it. You can't buy your way out of that. That's what has to happen. And there's plenty of there's plenty of people everywhere. Everywhere I look, everywhere I go, there's humans. Okay. okay. I kind of went okay, crazy so for a second. I'm going to start What's your question? back on all of that. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. okay. Listen, like I said, I learned to be pretty darn humble with uh, a lot of what's going on. So um, I found out that I'm not the only realtor that goes through that. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, I just have to stop doing digital marketing and all that other stuff and start putting more uh, free stuff to the plan. Exactly. Like just focus on talking to people, right? Okay. Meet people at Starbucks, call cold calls for sale by owners, door knock people, DM people on Instagram. All the marketing for an agent, all the money is spent to try to get in front of people so that, that you have a conversation, whether them reaching out to you, warm lead, cold lead, whatever, you calling them, they filled out a form. It's all just conversations. You can do it for free. But I'm pretty blessed because um, from some of my letters, even hitting people that, you know, I've been touching my sphere, I do have people calling me wanting to list. They're just not listing right now. So me, I'm trying to get someone to list right now, you know, like listening to everybody. Yeah, we want it now. And we're supposed to be. Leah, there's know. 5 million transactions happening in the country right now. 4 million existing home sales and like, 700 new home, new construction home sales. 5 million mm -hmm. people bought properties in 2023. It's going to end up buying properties this year. 5 million. Um, there's deals happening. If we're not doing deals, it means we're not talking to enough people and finding the people that are doing the deals. It's just a matter of volume, right? At some point, if your business is going to be massive, there has to be a volume, a large volume of influx of people that know who you are. You're not going to blow up over just a few people knowing who you are. And sometimes that takes time because if you create five new friends or property owners a day in, in five years, 250 working days a year, you could have 6,000 property owners that you talk to over five years. It's a long time. But look how many people know who you are, 6,000, just five, five new friends a day. Um, You just have to see, look at the big picture of the whole thing and make a goal. Hey, I'm going to make five friends with people that are talk to me about real estate today, whether I meet them mm -hmm. at Starbucks or Walmart or call them or hit them on social. I'm going to, I'm going to find five people I never talked to talk to them about real estate, make friends with them. That's what I'm going to do. That's the mentality you got to have every day, every day, five days a week, 250 working days a year. I got it. I got it. Yeah. And, and I do it. I just, I have to be more positive with it because I'm told that I'm like a negative Nelly. Okay. What are you negative I mean, about? I think, what I do you, think I'm just a realist. But what are you negative I about? I have to be more positive. What do you think you're negative about? Oh, I don't think I'm going to get that deal. Oh, I don't think um, that they're going to get this The problem, the problem is oh, you're thinking you know, about the deal. You're mm -hmm. thinking about your... That that instead of thinking, listing. oh, I don't think I'm going to get that deal. That listing. Yeah, you're you're not maybe not going to get that listing or whatever. Quit worrying about that. Who cares about that? That see see here's the thing. You're making the listing the goal, the objective when it's a byproduct of helping someone. Mm -hmm. That the listing shouldn't even be the goal. The listing the 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 goal should be getting to the bottom of why this person wants to do this 
thing mm -hmm. and then I help do. them mm -hmm. do it. If getting a mm -hmm. listing is part of that equation, awesome. Okay. This is this is the problem we run into that the that the goal is the listing. No, it's not. It's a lifelong relationship with that person. Lifelong meaning forever. That's the goal. How can I create a lifelong and 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 he, <laughs> here's the kicker. Lifelong relationship with this person to help them buy and sell real estate for the rest of their life and guess what? I don't care if they go use another agent in 2 years. See that is see are yeah. we friends with them because they're just doing business with us? Are we actually? No, I, no, no, I understand. I'm just asking a general question. Um, are we friends because they might do business with us or do we actually care about people? Do we just say we care because we want deals um, or do we actually care? Because if someone uses another agent and I'm guilty, I used to get mad at people for using other agents. Okay. But I got to the point where I became mature in my business. And I realized that, wait a minute, that's that's conflicting to who I am. Why would I get mad? Because I'm not making money off this person. I should be happy for them that they went and found the deal that they were comfortable with and bought a new property or sold a property. I should be happy that they did what was best for them and what, what, what made them feel comfortable. I should be happy for them as their friend, not mm -hmm. mad at them because I didn't make money. Right. Because it's unlimited. It's a buffet. Right. Right. There's enough business for everyone to have as much as they can handle at any given time. It took right. me a long time to learn all this stuff and become business mature enough to to be able to to repeat that to myself. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so the goal needs to be lifelong relationship with people, regardless if they use us or not, to help them for the rest of life. And guess what? That mentality makes you a millionaire. Like you will do business, so much business. You're going to lose some business, but you're going to get so much more business than you lose. And I know that there are so many people on here that want to do exactly what you're doing and that we are working towards doing that. Mm -hmm. And guys, don't sit there in front like y'all not <laughs> thinking what I'm thinking, but, but, but. There's no but. I'm told that I have to stop using but. You know, I I I need to think positively. So thank you very much for your advice, for your um, guidance. I am going to do exactly what you said and just train myself not to be thinking of the transaction, even though everybody that I do a transaction for is part of my family. Mm -hmm. Well, stop thinking, how do I convert this person and think, how can I talk to more people? Okay. Right. I'm trying to convert, convert, convert. Well, they may or may not convert. Mm -hmm. You're putting all your eggs in this basket when that basket may implode. You need to have, again, your hat and your name in so many hats that it's, it's inevitable that your name is going to get pulled out of those, out of, out of some of those hats. But I if you only got that. your name in one or two hats, chances are low that your, your name's going to get drawn. But if you have your name in, 40 hats, there's a good chance you're going to get, you know, eight of them. Mm -hmm. It's volume. It's a volume game. Okay. Got it. Got it. Got it. Good chat. Jessica. Hi. <laughs> How you doing? Good. How are you? I'm making it. I'm making it. Um, really excited to do this. I connected with someone really awesome yesterday. Um, my question is, I'm in New York and right now we are not allowed to cold call. So I'm trying. I'm calling. <laughs> All my agents in New York call. Everybody calls. It's a good excuse, right? It's a it's a good cop out. Oh, we aren't allowed to, so we can't call. You mean you can't do your job? Yeah. I mean, okay. So I guess you're gonna have to get another job. Yeah. I mean, if you can't do your job, then you got to get another job to pay your bills. There's no really <laughs> way around it. So then it comes back to, okay, is this really something? Because have you read every single line of the actual rules in New York about making calls? It's very confusing. Okay. So I, just gave up. so, I mean, go talk to a lawyer about it. 
because we did talk to lawyers about it and we found plenty of loopholes in the whole thing. Um, okay. um, but the point is, is all of my agents up there, which is a lot of agents, they never quit. They not for a second did they quit calling. Okay. Right. They are, they are, they, 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 in their mind, they are volunteer workers doing community outreach to see what they can do to help people. They're not calling to say, will you sell your house? You want to yeah. buy a house? They're saying, hey, I'm an agent in the area. I wanted to reach out and introduce myself, see if there's anything in the world I could do to help you today. You doing good? You know, what can I do to help you? Right? Okay. I'm not yeah. calling saying, hey, will you sell your house, please? <laughs> you don't know me. I don't know you, but will you sell your house so I can make some money? I'm trying to make some money today. Yeah. No, that's that's traditional 1980 scripts. They yeah. don't do that. We're calling to provide a service. Right? Okay. Yeah. You know, call them like it's a survey. Hey, we're doing a survey of homeowners in the area. You know, how are you doing today? I'd, I'd love to see if there's something I could do to help you. Let me ask you a couple questions. You know, I don't know how you want to approach it. Yeah. All right. But so, you can call. Beans and pumpkin. Pie. Okay. What else? I think that's it. Did I just crush your dreams of of of? of no, you didn't. But I have been having I, a hard time to get past that. I feel like your dreams just got crushed. Like you literally had a moment where you can't make I do. calls. I, I I get paranoid calling. Yeah. You have to think. What if this were my dad? Yeah. Right. Or my brother, cousin, or mom, whatever, uncle. You know, these are people. Listen. Do you, oh, there's 8 billion people in the world, right? What are the chances that one of those 8 billion people live close to you? Small. It's almost nothing. Yeah. And then you think about all the humans that lived on earth before us and all the ones that will live after us. You're talking probably into the, I don't know, hundreds of billions, trillion. I don't know how many humans will be here after us or have been here before us. Mm -hmm. But it's a big number. What are the chances that a human being not only lives during the same time that you live, but lives close to you? It yeah. is impossible. <laughs> it is impossible. Yeah. Right. And here we are. There's all these miracles that live all around us. And we're scared to call them, even though we have so much in common. Just the fact that we live in the same area during the, the same time frame. It's insane how much mm -hmm. we have in common. Just that. These are your neighbors. These are your brothers, sisters, moms, dads. Mm -hmm. You should be dying every day to reach out to these people and say, hey, I don't know if you yeah. see me online or if you know who I am, but here's who I am. This is what I do. And I'm here to help. I'd love to help you now, yeah. later, whenever. Right? Yeah. I mean, like I was dying when I was building my business, I was dying. It was killing me every day that, I, that at the end of my call session, because yeah. I wanted to keep calling. I wanted to reach out to people, help people, get to know people, make people mm -hmm. laugh. Yeah. That has to be a burning desire. I think a lot of people that don't make calls, they, they don't have a big enough why. Okay. You know, maybe they're comfortable in their life somehow, or they still have the house and, you know, they don't need to be a millionaire tomorrow or they have a big inheritance coming in two years or, you know, their spouse makes a lot of money. I don't know. But I feel like my why was so big. Like, you don't you guys don't understand how poor I grew up. Like the why for me to make a million bucks was like greater than anything on earth. I didn't even know the stock market crashed in 2008. I was so focused on making a million bucks. Mm -hmm. I ignored Facebook. I didn't get on any social media. I was so focused right here. Make calls, do emails, do direct mail, make a million dollars one day. I believed it so much. And I worked 15 hours a day because my, because my why was so big. Well, what was my why? And when I was 10 years old, um, I had a premonition that I would, I would make, a, I would, I would, I would lock myself in a room, become great at something, make so much money and then turn around and help people. Somehow I didn't know what I was going to do, how I was going to do it. Like, mm -hmm. it's crazy how my life played out because I thought about this when I was 10, that I would make a bunch of money, turn around and use that money to help people. 
You know, in Vegas and in Miami, the two events I just did, I paid that out of my pocket. My travel expenses, and I even threw in on the Miami event out of my pocket. Mm -hmm. Um, Like I'm using my money and pouring it back into you guys. You guys don't realize this, but I, that's what I'm doing. Um, And so if your why isn't, like, I wanted to change the world. Like, I don't have to do this Zoom call. Why am I doing yeah. it? It's free. Yeah. Why am I doing this? Because my why is so big, I'm willing to do anything. And that's what you have to be as an agent. Like, your why has to be so big that you want such an amazing life for yourself, your family, whatever, that you don't give a shit. You're you 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 you're, you don't you'll make thousands of calls a week. You don't care yeah. what you have to do. You're going to do it. And if you're not at that level where you're like, I'll do anything, then it, then it, then it, then it becomes a struggle because you're not willing to do the, the things that need to do to succeed. So then we're just kind of like always like hovering in this place of uncertainty. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So you have to decide, do I want this more than anything and willing to do anything? I don't care what it is. Because if you're not, then we're always going to be in the place that we are. But yeah. if you are and you actually execute on it, then you could be in a really amazing place in the next five to 10. For sure. Thank you. You're welcome. Good stuff. Uh, let's see. Who? Rose? Or, Hi, Ricky. Did I so I'm with the, with the mailers. Um, I always struggle with what to say in them. So I don't typically send a lot of mailers out for that reason. And I'm newer to your trainings. Like this mailers. is mailers. What are you talking about? Mailers? Like, um, like the letters that we send out to homeowners. So you saw the letter, you know what we send out? No, I'm new. I'm newer. So oh, okay. I was trying to come up with things on my own and I always feel like I don't ever know what to say to them. Um, let me grab this video. Can you grab this in the comments and watch this? Because this will explain the whole thing to you. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Cool. Jessica, was your hand up? Yes, I'll put it back down. Sorry. Did you did you have a question, Jessica? We spoke already. You just spoke to me. Oh, okay. 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 <laughs> I can't see your face, so I don't know. Let's see where we are here. That's me. <laughs> oh, okay, 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 okay. I was like, oh, all right. Aaron. Hi, hi, hi. I'm on both. Well, hello, phones. hello, hello, hello. Hang on, hang on. <laughs> hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. How are you? You, you. Okay, maybe that's better. I'll just use yeah. my phone. Um, so I have a system through my office that I pay. Um as part of my desk be to use all their, I know, shush. It's a, <laughs> um, I call it constant contact and I was going to do the email and yeah. I kind of got confused on what I should be doing. Cause I'm already touching them twice with mm -hmm. two emails and then most of them are in my farm. So I'm also sending them, um, uh, postcards with QR codes for home values. And okay. I, I don't want to send four more emails, but I don't want to not do it because it seems I, I'm just like, what next? I don't what know, are you, I what, okay. Okay. What, what, what all are you doing right now? What all are you sending? Okay. So I've got um, a neighborhood news, which takes their address and goes into their neighborhood. That's a direct, that's direct mail, right? It, nope. That's a monthly email. Okay. It's a monthly email. What else? With pen, pending active and all that. And then, um, Caldwell Banker does a drawing um every month for like certain things like five hundred dollar gift card for the Home Depot. And so people like those and they like to sign up for, you know, a week Airbnb. That's an summer. email or what? That's an email also. Okay, so and two emails. The postcard, I use core fact and do a QR code where they could get um their home about a real basic desk appraisal. If they uh -huh. scan a QR code and then I get notified and I contact them. Um, so that's three 
um, and then I do call and, and I use that neighborhood news with your script, you know, is there anybody in the neighborhood that you would use if you did something down the road? And I keep in touch with you via email once a month. And that's what I've set all those people up. All right. So now do I add four more emails by doing the constant contact or? No, you do two more. You're already doing two, right? Okay. Yeah. You do two more. So you do those on the same day of the week. Do the, do the Home Depot one and the, the monthly thing. Mm -hmm. You do those on the same day, right? So pick a day. Is it Tuesday? Is it Wednesday? Is it Thursday? Is it Friday? What day do you want to send your email? Make sure that monthly one goes out on that day. Make sure that Home Depot one goes out on that day. I can't. What's that? They go out a month later from when I set it up. Okay. Cancel that program. Okay. Because if 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 you if you don't have consistency in your marketing, your clients view you as inconsistent. Mm -hmm. And now they don't think you're dependable. And now they're going to go with an agent who's very consistent with their marketing. If you do the first of the month every month, that falls on a different day and it feels random. Even though it's the first of the month, it still feels random. There's no mm -hmm. real consistency there. It's like, oh, you get one month, you get it on a Monday. The next month, you get it on a Thursday, it's like, it's, and honestly, once a month is not frequent enough. Like it, it, it's good. I'm not saying it's horrible, but you're going to lose to a guy like me who is crushing it every Wednesday on the money. And they're like, that's the age that I'm going to use the consistent, dependable one that I, every Wednesday, I know I'm getting the same stuff, same subject, different preheader text with valuable information about what he thinks about the market. So let me ask you on your monthly email, do you write in there your opinions on stuff? No, and that's what hey, I want. Er. I know. <laughs> hey, er. that is, I feel like it's, it's a mess. So I feel it's like very, I it's a very, see, that's a very cold thing. When you just yeah. send out generic information or market information with no real like emotion behind it or your opinions, you're again, you're going to lose to the people who are actually spending time to bring value to the market. Okay. When you do these automated things, it's not a lot of value. You're not spending time trying to bring real value. You look like every other agent. I guarantee you there's agents with that same program and there's clients that get the same email with the same subject at the same exact time from like three different agents. You're kind of putting your, yourself in this hole where you look where you're basically just like a robot, like you're just like every other agent. Um, the way to differentiate yourself and stand out amongst the crowd of agents is by giving your two cents on what's happening locally every week. Okay. Thanks. That's just, that's just my two cents. You do not mm -hmm. have to execute on it. You could say, Ricky, I don't want to do it. That's bullshit. I'm I'm okay with you saying that. But all I can do is tell you what I think. And I think you could crush it way harder if you were spending a little time bringing real value to the market. Thanks. Myra. May, Mayra. That's like an Alabama name. Mayra. You're muted, Myra. Yeah, I think uh. she knows. She knows. Okay, I was trying to <laughs> to get in. Hi, Ricky. How are you? Thank you for your time. My pleasure. And and uh, I don't know. It's I have a question. So I am very like social person. I get invited to a lot of social events, like community events, like a chambers events. But uh, I cannot really find a way how to get more business for all these people that I am meeting. So okay. I I still lost. I'm thinking that I'm losing a lot of business. Yeah, you and... are. So Myra, um, are you doing a weekly email? No. Okay. Are you doing anything to remarket to your database? Uh, yes, I'm working, but I am not consistent. Okay. What do you do? Yeah, so that's I am I am just taking care of the past clients, but at the new person, so I am still trying to figure out how can I get advantage to all these people that I meet when I go to this type. I understand, of I understand, but here's the thing though, Myra. This is why I'm asking you this. 
It doesn't matter how you're going to get business from these people if you're going to put them in your database, but you don't have any way of remarketing to them. And you're just like flying by the seat of your pants, not making sure nobody ever forgets. Remember, like making sure nobody forgets who you are. Mm -hmm. And so all the people that you're meeting, you can meet them. And I can tell you how to, I'm going to tell you how to utilize business from them. But that's step two. If you don't have a system in place where once you do utilize them as a contact to where they never forget you, then you're going to meet them in public or at whatever. And then two years later, they're going to do a deal with a different agent because they forgot who you are because you don't have anything in place to make sure they never forget you. Yep. Okay. So mm -hmm. that's why I'm asking you these questions because like, what's the point of trying to get business off these people if we're going to maybe do a deal now or they're going to forget about you? You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So and so so the object is to have a system in place like a weekly email to your entire database on the same day of the week forever so nobody ever forgets you forever. Now when you go to these marketing and networking events, you have an objective. What's the objective? To get their email. Put them in your database so they never they never forget who you are and the great first impression that you laid on them at the event. Right? Mhm. Mm so when you go to these events, is it business after hours? Is it, is it yeah. business oriented people? Yeah, I'm also so these, that, yes. These people have, uh, these people have business cards they're giving, right? Uh huh. Yeah, I collect a lot of them. Yep. <laughs> bada bing, bada boom. So yeah, <laughs> so this is okay. So a weekly email has to happen. It's too much work, Ricky. It's like 15 minutes a week to get to a million dollars in five years. You got 15 minutes a week to invest into a mil your million dollar year in five years? Yes. Okay. So that's a, the other thing that uh, I feel like I overwhelm it sometimes because I do it by myself. And sometimes, I don't know, it's a good idea to hire somebody that helped me with the paperwork. So I don't know. Yeah, have somebody help you with the paperwork. Absolutely. Because that's that's my... That's my thing. So I know really how many deal, how many deals deal. do you have under contract? Uh I also do a commercial deal. So right now I only have like three. Okay. So and, if you want to hire a transaction three commercial. If you want to hire a transaction coordinator to help you with the paperwork, they just charge per transaction. They can handle the paperwork side, right? That's easy. Okay. You need to be the one writing the emails because it needs to be your thoughts. It needs to be yeah. your opinions. It takes like 15 minutes. Okay. So, and what do you, you what do you recommend to to send us emails like a newsletter? Like a what is that? Like, yeah, can we'll I add it, like what database to use and stuff? No, like uh what can I send to that email? So like right uh, here, look, right here, look. Grab this link, sign up for sign up right there. You'll get my four week. Here, I'll show it to you. Hope I didn't lose you. What? Yeah, oh no, you're there. No, I'm there. here. Just... Okay. You can see my screen. Uh huh. Okay. So when you sign up there, you get constant contact. All right. You put all your contacts in here. All right. You go here to create an email. Let's see, constant things in the way. All right. You go here to create an email. Okay. Okay, within the create email, you're going to see whatever business name that you put when you join Constant Contact, there's going to be a tab here for your business name. You open it and boom, there's four weekly emails right here, templates. Week one, week two, week three, week four, and you rotate them every month over and over again. This is stats of the month, restaurant of the month, deal of the month, news of the month. I made this so simple. It's not even funny. This is week one. You just go in here and change all this to your name, right? You put your low, all your, your stuff will already be here populated. You get rid of the yellow, right? Mm -hmm. You just click there and delete. But this, this is, this is teaching you stuff. I put this here for a reason. This teaches you about how to structure your subject, how to use the preheader text. Okay. Um, this is talking about the tagline. Okay. Your tagline goes here. You're going to get rid of this yellow. The tagline is going to be like hardest working agent in Denver or whatever whatever your tagline is, put a different picture here every week, high resolution. Okay. Um, put links here to the new condo listings, new homes, search, put the average sales price right here. Number of transactions here, number of new listings here. 
and then each on each one, give your opinion on these stats. Okay, see all your listings here, all your stuff. And so I made this really easy where it's just plug and play. Um, restaurant of the month. I talked about that from the beginning. You know, pick a restaurant every month, showcase it. Nice picture. Maybe a picture of you there with the fam at the table eating. Guys, you got to yeah. try the lasagna. And, you know, say we had such a great time. Ask for Bobby. Tell him I sent you and reply back for a chance to win a $100 gift card. You know how many replies you're going to get? And then you get into back and forth with all those people and see how they've been doing. You know, deal of the month. It, it, it's all right here. Just go to the link I just put in the chat. You put the link on the chat? Yeah. Yeah, constantcontact.com backslash ZTD. Perfect. Yeah. Just, I would just crush it. Okay, well, now, now, back, back, okay, back to what I'm saying, though. All right, listen to me. That has to be in place. You've got to have a system where nobody you talk to ever forgets who you are. You have to. Otherwise, you won't see that compounding business roll into a million bucks a year. Not going to happen. Okay? Now, yeah. Yep. Now, does anyone ever win the gift cards? Absolutely. Every time somebody wins the gift cards. So um, the people, when you meet them, you're going to get their business card. They're, they know you're in real estate. You're giving them your business card, right? You're going to put them in that weekly email database. They're going to start getting those emails. You're going to let them know, hey, I'm going to, I'm going to, you're going to start getting stuff from me. I want to stay in touch with you. But what you got to do is talk to them about what they're looking to do real estate wise. Mm -hmm. You have to open up that conversation, whether it be there or whether it be make a great first impression, get their information and then call them that week or the next week. Hey, remember me from the party? Remember me from the business after hours? Remember me from the networking thing? Cool, man. It was great to meet you. I just want to let you know I just had a blast and I got all your information here. You know, they, they're they a landscaper. Be like, I'm going to do what I can do to send you some business. You know, they're a lawyer. I'm going to keep you in mind for my clients. If they need, if they ever need a lawyer, a title company, whatever, whatever they do, mm -hmm. let them know. You're going to help them. You're going to send clients their way. If they'll send you some clients, that'd be great. If they ever need to yeah. do some business, be great. So it's just having these conversations. Are you are yeah. you following up? Are you calling them after the events? Yeah, sometimes like uh, like today, I I get two referrals from the people that that I meet in one of the events. Just and, and so you call them after. Yeah, that's what I want to ask you. Okay. Too. What is the thing the best thing to you when you get a referral from somebody? And I want to meet this friend that he already sent me like three deals. And he want to meet me because he knows a lot of people too. And he does a lot of business and she's re he's referring me a lot of business. So, get them all I, in the database. Listen, those people are going to do so much business in four years. Please don't let this opportunity fly away and them do business with a different agent in four years. Weekly email, weekly email, weekly email. Okay. Okay, great. Thank cool. you. You're welcome. Herms. That's me. Delete. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. How you doing? Um, good. I'm good. Um, I just want to say thanks first and foremost for making me think um, bigger and longer in the future of what all these little actions do and just put it into perspective because I think that's what we all have a little bit of an issue with is like, how do we actually get to that point? And it is doing these little actions that we always put aside and say we don't have time to do. Um, and so I am I do have call reluctancy. Um, I don't have a problem talking to people. I'm on two committees on my uh, local board of realtors. Um, I, I don't know what it is, but I... Whenever I saw you do the live call the other day and you're doing live calls mm -hmm. and how fired up you were, mm -hmm. I fucking love that. You were fired mm -hmm. up and you're mm -hmm. just like, did you, did you hear that? Did you, I got the email, you know, and mm -hmm. just like changing my perspective mm -hmm. on getting fired up and that it's fun to do and not a chore, you know? Mm -hmm. And so I um, I started the letters and I got red X. I haven't made any calls yet because uh, I just got it. But 
I I'm trying to like get in that mindset of being fired up about it instead of it being a chore. Yeah. And so maybe the first few phone calls, you know, what's your, I mean, you tell us all your advice. I mean, you know, so, but so I don't know if you were here towards the beginning of the... sitting down. Yeah. Doing I don't it. know. I don't know if you were here towards the beginning of the call. Were you? I'm in Austin, Texas. No, I mean at the beginning of this call. Were you were you here in the beginning of this call? I missed like the first like 10, 10 minutes. Okay. I don't you may or may not have heard me talk about writing the letter and then making the calls after the letter. Did yep. you hear that part? Yep. Yes, so like, I just sent out my first batch. Yeah. So, I'll so be I used to have some pretty bad like week. call reluctance myself. Um, but again, my why was so big that that wasn't gonna stop me. I was gonna crush right through that. Um, but I use the letters and the postcards and stuff as kind of a bridge to getting used to making calls. And I kind of thought, oh, if I have this reason to call about this letter I sent or postcard, it just makes it easier to call people. And it did, especially in the beginning. And then after a mm -hmm. long time, I realized I don't need the, you know, it's, it's like training. This is what I was trying to compare it to. I was trying to say like kindergartens, it's actually like training wheels. The letters are like training wheels for phone calls. And eventually you take the training wheels off. Well, eventually you realize you don't need the letters. You can just, you mm. can just ride the bike. You know what I mean? Right. It's the same yep. thing. I knew there was an, a good okay. analogy in there somewhere. Good analogy. But any, <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, but the thing is like, okay, sitting down to make the, you know, like sitting down to make the calls the question for me becomes what else am I going to do? What are my other options? Um, I know I have to talk to people back to back to back to back to back to back to back. So yeah. if I'm not sitting down calling people back to back to back to back to back to back to back, how else am I going to have these conversations so I can get to this million bucks a year? And I couldn't think of anything. I wasn't going to door knock. I wasn't going to go meet people in public. I couldn't think of anything else to do other than this myself. Right. Mm -hmm. So um, if I'm not going to sit down and call, then what am I doing? Right. It's, it's like, there's nothing. So I might as well try to figure out a way to be fired up about doing this. You know? Yeah. It's, and you definitely got me fired up. It really is fun though. That's the thing. Yeah. When you do it and you talk to people and you're in a place where you laugh when people are, you know, rude to you and stuff, like you probably saw me laugh when people are rude or whatever. Um, it gets to where it's kind of funny when it happened, when it's happened to you so much, you become numb to it. And it's just like funny to you because it's like, it's, it's almost like a hate comment on a video. When you have a hater, it's almost like that. Um, and it's like, mm -hmm. this person doesn't know you. They're taking one second of an interaction with you and then immediately just being rude in some kind of way. That's the same thing as a hater. And it's like, you're yeah. not going to succeed without a couple haters. You know what I mean? For sure. Cool. Cool. Thank you. I really you're appreciate welcome. it. Everything that you do for us. Thank you. Danny. So a question about the letters. I haven't sent one out yet. Um, I just kind of heard about it yesterday. Um, but I'm prospecting now in the mornings for like four hours, eight to 12, and then doing lead follow-up and appointments in the afternoon. Um, do you have an issue with like getting paying for an assistant? This is my second year in to write the letters. Not then... at all. Okay. Hire somebody to write the letters. Yeah. I used to do that. I had, um, I hired somebody just to write letters for a little while. These letters, these exact letters, I was sending out hundreds a week making millions off this letter. Um, and then another question with the restaurant of the month, I, I sent out for the first time with the gift card where they had a chance to win. Yep. And, and I got one person to respond. There's your uh, winner. Yeah. But do you recommend putting it, I put it at the bottom, do you recommend putting it in the, like, where should I put that to make it more appealing to the- You didn't put it in the pre-header text? No. Oh, well, there's the problem. Okay. You got to put it in the pre-header text, like $100 gift card to- Cobalts, gotcha. our hundred dollar cobalt card, hundred dollar cobalt gift card needs to be in the pre header text. 
If it's not, they're not going to open it up. They're not going to know. They're not going to reply. They're, nothing's going to happen, especially at the bottom, because most people just click on it, read the top and get out. They don't even scroll down. That's why right. a lot of you that are making these emails where it's like a, 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 like a long, you got to scroll, keep scrolling. People aren't getting there. They're looking at what they can see right when they open it and they're getting out of there. It's so true because when I did it for a year straight, I put the listings and all the stuff on the bottom. And then I, I DM'd you like two weeks ago and changed to yours. And you were like, I'd stick with yours. And I changed and I got like 15 clicks because I put all the stuff on the top. So that was a big breakthrough for me. Yeah. Do you yeah. recommend too with the $100, I should do 100 or start off at 50 What are your thoughts on the price? Doesn't matter. It could be 20 It could be... 30 it could be 50 it could be 100 it could be 200 doesn't matter cool thanks for what, whatever whatever you want to do you know anything anything works gotcha thank you yep andre andre all right cool uh let's see ba, 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 ba. all right cool i'm fixing to shut this down this little thing where i'll sit down with you for an hour or two if you want right there fixing to shut that down so if anybody want to do that click there and schedule it uh that's it guys uh well melissa you got a question <clears throat> first of all hi ricky <clears throat> thank you so much for um taking time out of your day I really appreciate it. I um, just had a quick question. I guess I want to really touch base with like, you know, someone had mentioned earlier from your database, people that you haven't talked to in a while. So what I actually wanted to try out was the, uh, the WhatsApp kind of the broadcast, just make a video kind of reintroducing myself. What are your thoughts on that? Doing a broadcast, like text video type thing. Correct. Um, Just basically saying like, you know, hi, you know, this is Melissa Torres. Um, you know, I have you in my database. We must have met at some point, whether you were a past client, so on. You know, I just don't know how to really put it together so that it makes sense once I broadcast it to everyone. Yeah, it's tough. I don't know. Um, I would rather... I think I would rather opt for putting everybody in a weekly email and just starting to send that. And then just over time, like calling, how many people is it? I have probably about 5,200. 5,200. Where did they come from? <clears throat> well, some of them, it could have been past clients, people that I met actually at one point, but you know, I was going through some of them and it's hard for me to really remember where so I you, met like, I... Uh, you met 5,200 people that you met 5,200 people or 300 of them were past clients and people who actually met and the other 4,900 are Facebook leads. Correct. So it's a combination. So do you have it segregated somehow where you have the actual people that you've met and talked to? Or is it all just in one spreadsheet and you don't even know who's who? Yeah, it's a little hard. Do you, I'm not sure. Okay. Do you have um, all their phone numbers and emails? I do. It's kind of hard because some of those people have never met you at all. And then some of those people have relationships with you. So when you send this blanket video, um, it could come across kind of cold if it's somebody you know. And then it could come across kind of spammy for the people you don't know. So for me, I would send out, I would just put them on the weekly email. I would just start sending them information on the market. And then I would just start calling through that list. If there's any way you okay. can segregate that list or any way you can figure out who are the 300 people I actually have talked to before, that would be gold because... You could send them uh, a video maybe. And then, well, you could send everybody a video. I'm not saying don't do that. I'm just thinking through it with you. But what but what I feel like would be mandatory 
is that weekly email gets started. These people never forget you in five years, you know, you know, 50 of them do a deal with you because of the email and then start calling through them. Say, Hey, it's Melissa. Just checking in. How you doing? You know, seeing if you're getting my emails, if you need anything, whatever, and try to figure out who they are and then segregate it from there. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, that's just where the work, <laughs> that's where the work is. I'm here next week, but I'm gone the following week back to Miami. I don't know. Maybe on the 16th of November, I could possibly do another session like this. I'm going to put together like a 2024 business planning session. That might be. Nah, probably in December, early December. Okay. Here's your homework. Get to fucking work. <laughs> Go do some stuff. All right. All right, you guys hit me on Instagram if you need anything. Um, let's see. Make sure you're on my text platform. I'll put it in the chat. If you aren't on that, text me there. Uh, wait, that went to Melissa directly. Hold on. Oh, shoot. Here we go. All right, that's it. Love you guys. Go crush it.